Bouncing underway here. He's catching Valtteri Lander around the outside though. He avoids the wall. No, he doesn't. Oh, we've got carnage again. Carnage again. Oh, no front wing on the part of it. Oh, focus back on Adam Blocker as there's contact. Hello everyone and welcome back to Monday Night and Race Spot TV. That always means iRacing IndyCar action. Uh, the virtual month of May has come to a close, but no IMS fatigue for some of our competitors here in the iRacing IndyCar Open Championship as we work our way through 84, 85 more laps, excuse me, here at the virtual brickyard. Uh, all building up as well to the 105th running of the Indianapolis 500. Uh, this weekend should be oh so exciting uh, as history was made this past weekend uh, with Brandon Trainer winning three in a row here at the virtual brickyard. Uh, my name is Arjuna Kenki Party. No Lorenzo Bonder alongside for today's action. He's been called aside for some other broadcast duties. Uh, but as always, TV cameras provided to us by Istvan Ballo and TrackCams22.com with additional car cameras designed by RaceBot's own Tyler Maxson. Uh, you can follow along with live timing and scoring by heading to racebot.wtf forward slash Indy to follow along with the world-class suite of data analysis tools. Interesting race then on the cards because in our championship picture, uh, one of our main protagonists still is here trackside in the real world. It was so close for Simona, uh, uh, Simona Di Silvestre, excuse me, in Indy car qualifying this weekend in her engine engineer Adam Blocker would have been so tense as he watched on from the sidelines one week from today he will return to the iRacing service to compete on the streets of Belle Isles for a 40 lap championship showdown and uh, well why is it a championship showdown look at how close it is at the top of the standings right now uh, Blocker leads his teammate Bennett by just 178 points but in what should be a very strong strength of field here today at the virtual IMS. Who knows what the Brit can do to close that championship gap. Look at how close it is, by the way, from 6th through 10th. You've got just, and I say just because it's not that far uh, when you look beyond uh, 11th plus as well. 74 points between Severi Seppa for uh, Indy Alliance and Three Crowns Racing separating him from Richard Craig. So uh, lots of championship intrigue here, of course. Uh, Adam Crane, Brendan Lichtenberg, Andrew Marquez. There's a three-way fight for third place in this championship. And watch out here then over the next 85 laps to see if maybe some championship storylines do develop. As always, when we are here in Speedway, Indiana, there's only one thing we can do uh, here in RaceBot TV. So let's turn up the music and play back home again in Indiana. Back home again in Indiana And it seems that I can see a gleaming candlelight still burning bright through the sycamores for me the new moon sends all its fragrance through the fields I used to roam when I dream about the moonlight on the how I long for my Indiana home. Let's turn up the trumpets and go trackside to take a look at our starting grid in round 11 of the iRacing IndyCar Open Championship.
on pole position. It's Marco Aurelio Brazil. He missed out on the top split this weekend uh, by just one position. A 39-223 gets him to the front of the field here today. It's Andres Ake who will be on his outside for the team talent number one machine. Uh, just over 100 separate those two drivers. The Brit Henry Bennett in his quest to try and uh, reclaim a championship here on a Monday night inside of Severi Sepa for Indy Alliance Three Crowns Racing with the muscle man inside of Robin Glenix on row number three. Laura Gerhard for Power Slide Motorsports inside of Carlos Ruiz with Chris, Chris Wilhite inside of Alexander Van Der Zandt. Great to see both those drivers back here on a Monday night. Christian Macarelli inside of Marcel Kovacs, a European flair on row number six with Andrew Marquez and Adam Crane on row number seven. Watch out for them in that battle for third place in the championship. Matt Holobo, Andrew Wood, they line up on row eight with Thomas Geisler and Aaron Roos on row number nine. Jason Wallet, the final car to set a qualifying lap time. Six tenths off the pace here, so a bit of a spread in terms of the lap times in this open setup competition with Alexis Newsom. Great to see her as well. And what can she do working her way from the back of the field? A revelation in the Lionheart Speedway series has been ha having some interesting runs here on a Monday night. Who can forget the drama last week at the Atlanta Motor Speedway? Tony Pizarro, Diego Pereno, final row of the grid. And of course, no three wide start when you come to the virtual IMS. You have to wait for the month of November to get that here on the iRacing service. The cars begin to pull away from the line. And just a reminder is, again that racebot.wtf forward slash Indy to follow along with live timing and scoring powered by our friends at Timing 71 and their world-class suite of data analysis tools. 85 laps on the agenda here today, and, well, very different conditions to when uh, the drivers were in action just over this past weekend for the 12th annual iRacing Indy 500. It's 36 degrees Celsius in terms of track temperature. That is 20, let me repeat, 20 degrees Celsius cooler than the action over the weekend. So. We are in for a totally different type of a race. Ambient air temperature, 25 degrees. It'll be interesting to see if that changes and develops throughout the session. And 16 kilometer an hour wins as well. That is you know, quite strong, <laughs> especially when you think about here at Indy. It's blowing westward, and I'm going to be honest, off the top of my head, I can't really remember which way that blows. So I'll try and get that uh, in the next couple of laps, but we are ready to rock and roll once more here from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. What excitement building up to the 105th running of the Indianapolis 500. It's always great having uh, the virtual month of May, just like we have for every other iRacing a special event, the prelude, the build up for drivers here on iRacing to build the anticipation, get out onto track and experience what it's like for the drivers in action. Uh, when they're watching then on TV. It will be Brazil from Ake, from Bennett, Seppa, Musselman, and Glenix, the front three, three rows. This should be an interesting start. And let's see how long Brazil waits to pick up the throttle as the iRacing pace car down onto the safety of Pit Road. Henry Bennett in his championship fight will need to try and get some good championship points. Green flag flies once more from the virtual IMS. They are three wide in the background couple of cars maybe didn't take to the start so interesting that maybe some drivers expecting some chaos once more thundering our way down in through turn two Brazil leads comfortably and Bennett's gonna get swamped on the outside here from Severi Sepa get an indication of just how rapidly these cars are moving there's Brazil down in towards turn number three and Bennett's defending from the orange and blue of Carlos Ruiz oh it's almost contact and three wide back in the pack on the edge of the top ten Adam Crane inside of, I believe that's Marcel Kovacs as Van der Sands coming down onto pit road. He must have some sort of penalty from jumping on the start. But to complete lap number one, it's Brazil from eight, from Seppa, from Bennett. The front four contenders still side by side. As look at the momentum from Andrew Wood as he slings it around the outside. Oh, that was very confident. Now tries to tuck underneath Kovacs. Out front, the first swap for the race lead. It's Ake in the orange and... Silver Black Team Talent car is too wide, too deep. They will dive. And of course, being relatively cool track temperatures will be interesting to see how long some of these drivers elect to be patient. We'll get a great look here as down 
the start finish line and across the yard of bricks they will come side by side for the race lead there's adam crane popping out into line as well but out of our 22 starters they're still all out there on the track itself Still more two wide action back in the pack. It's Andrew Wood trying to charge his way up the field. Already eight positions gained on the start so far. And now side by side trying to get on past Crane, the 2020 iRacing IndyCar Series champion. As Brazil back to the front of the field out front. Just watching how much easier it is for certain cars. Ooh, we've got a car stopped on the back straight here. This might be in through turn three. It's Tony Pizarro. We'll reset back down onto pit road as the yellow flag flies and well I think a rather unfortunate one there so straight to the race bot TV replay machine and this is on lap four out of 85 uh, Pizarro just pulls down to the inside the New York native something clearly not right maybe a technical issue there the end result is the first caution on the day no changes in the front four then, a bit of swapping around, not just from the top two like we saw this past weekend with those scorching track temperatures, but Bennett able to get on past Seppa as well. And while we wait for the field to stack on behind the pace car, you can see left-hand side of your screen, uh, the movers and shakers in the action so far. Woodith has been uh, quite an impressive charge of seven so far, but Newsom, look at her after not setting a qualifying lap time, already is back up into, well, touching distance of not just the top 10, but maybe the top five as well. <laughs> 22 starters. What's just happened now on track? Oh, we got some cars stacked up behind the pace car. So there may be just... A bit of confusion here about where the pace car was, but there you can see the front four clearly are in front. What a dramatic weekend it was, not just with history being made on the iRacing services. Laura Gerhardt leads a number of cars down onto pit road. In real world qualifying as well. My, oh my. I mean, watching the final 30 minutes of action on Saturday the top 30 getting locked into the field I mean oh willpower struggling confusion as Dalton Kellett went out for that last ditch run and somehow despite going slower still 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 well yeah no there was a lot lots of confusion not just in my head I'm, I, I'm pretty sure as well but in our IndyCar community discord as well which is Always such a fun place, and I'm looking forward to watching along for this weekend's action. Chatting with the guys and gals of the IndyCar community. Sunday was interesting. The Fast 9, well, what can you say? I mean, for a second it looked like Renus VK. Then for a second it looked like maybe Colton Herder. And then at the line, well, you can't deny Scott Dixon, I guess. The mark of a champion is uh, being very consistent. You know what? I think it's probably a good opportunity since we'll get at least one more look, uh, one more lap, I should say, around uh, the 2.5 uh, miles here. Let's go and see if we can pick up what happened with Alexander Van de Sant. Might have to jump a little bit further. And, well, he came down onto pit row. That was the confusing thing. So watch here. Does he pop out of line? His drone being flown perfectly down this main straightaway. Gerhard, not the best of launches there. Wilhite had to check up significantly. Not necessarily sure why Van der Sant came down. It was only 7.9 seconds stationary. You wonder, uh, speculate. Maybe he put the qualifying set up on, so I had to come down and uh, grab some more fuel. Well, whatever the case may be, he's still on the lead lap. I think he's one of the big winners as a result of that early race caution. 
just over 200 miles of action here today. And I did say indie fatigue. I think the strength of field, I saw someone say upwards of 4,000 I rating. And so, well, I did say at the start, it's important for Bennett to try and get as many points as he can. A problem, of course, becomes with drop weeks on these official iRacing championships. Out of a 12-week calendar, your best eight scores will get included in the championship fight. It does mean that even though Adam Blocker will miss, I think, three in a row with his trackside duties at uh, Ilmore Engineering and working on Simone Du Salvestro's car this, uh, over this path, uh, past month of May, does mean he's still in with a potential shot of, of going to the streets of D Detroit next time out and taking a championship back. The Brandon Trader won uh, just three months ago. And for Power Slide Motorsports, whether it's Block or whether it's Bennett, it will still be one of their drivers back to the front of this championship. It's the pace car back down onto the safety of the pit road. Marco Brazil picks up the throttle. We go green flag racing once more here from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Single file, they will thunder themselves down in through turn one. Doesn't look like the muscle man got the best of launches. As you can see, there is a bit of separation that's formed this time around, and we'll see with these cool track temperatures how long it will take for the pack to start forming up once more. Swap for the race lead then as 8 gets on past. And we'll check in with the Ohio native Chris Wilhite. Look at Alexis Newsom trying to rocket her way uh, up into the top 10. Let's ride on board with the three crowns racing with Indy Alliance driver. She's tucked up behind Andrew Wood as we thunder down across the yard of bricks. Now with these cooler track temperatures, what does she do? Rides right in the dirty air of the car in front. Not necessarily what you want to be doing, but there we go. Finds the clean air as Woodith really slings it down to the inside groove. That, uh, as you could see there, really finding some momentum. Didn't really expect that to happen. And meanwhile, once more, swap for the race lead. Let's jump on board with the Brazilian Marco Brazil here. And probably make a bit of a pun on the Brazilian Brazil. Here he goes. Inside line, and just like we saw this past weekend, swap drafting. They're just trying to pull away and build the momentum as much as you can, but Bennett's lurking in the background, and uh, the difference with what we saw this past weekend is it wasn't just drivers able to, uh, in the front two, able to make things happen here with the cooler track temperatures. Who knows if Henry Bennett can potentially get something done as we ride on board with the Power Slide Motorsports driver. Look at him close up in towards turn number three and listen to his engine as we come out of turn four. You can hear the tires as well, just trying to minimize the amount of scrub as we jump with this wonderful onboard look to the right-hand side of the cockpit. That aero screen, of course, like a jet fighter in front of the driver. And well, Henry Bennett, 007, his preferred number in the British racing green. He must be feeling pretty much like James Bond, I'm sure, at this point in time. 360 kilometers an hour, thundering his way down the back straight here at the virtual Indianapolis Motor Speedway. What a feeling it really is. There's lots of action for 8th, 9th, and 10th, 11th as well as Wilhite. No, that's Kovacs, excuse me. A couple of purple cars in the community, not just here in today's action. You've got the likes of Joshua Chin, Christian Steele, and as some people pointed out, the OG, Tim Doyle. All with the purple machines. Kovacs in 7th then with Crane behind. And left side of the screen once more. Let's throw you up the movers and shakers. You can kind of see, see, despite the cooler track temperatures, that at this point in the run, we're not really seeing as much side-by-side -side action as one might have expected. Of course, in the top four, other than the leaders that have been swapping around, no real switch arounds there. And again, across the yard of bricks, they swap once more. It'll be great to see fans back in the grandstands for this upcoming weekend. 
looks really busy during qualifying as well. Such a yeah, great sight to see. And, well, when I was talking to Aaron Likens, who is now the flag man for the NTT IndyCar Series and getting a bit of attention on social media for his wonderful style in the way that he, he puts those flags out there. Well, what, what he said, his first experience of flagging at Indy was, was, of course, in 2020 when no fans were at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And he said it was a totally surreal experience and, and he was looking forward to, to, to feeling the energy and feeding off the energy as well from the crowd. So I can only imagine what it's like for the drivers. And hopefully, hopefully next year we will be back at 100% capacity as well. Still back and forth for the race lead. It does look as though Severi Seppo is starting to tail off. And Henry Bennett lurking in the background. You just wonder, maybe he's using that fuel map that we talked about this past weekend. Fuel maps much more effective here on the iRacing service than they were even six months ago. Uh, the iRacing meta for so long was lifting and coasting. Now you actually use your in-car tools, not just your ARBs and your weight jackers, which for so long have helped you uh, navigate through dirty air here at the Brickyard and all the other wonderful ovals that we visit here in this iRacing IndyCar Open Championship. But also the fuel maps. You have one through eight. One, seven, and eight all being your max attack, if you will. Your qualifying mode, Lewis Hamilton style. Seven and eight with a slightly different throttle map, which is used on the road courses if you're uh, not me. I I've always loved that linear feeling. Leave it in control of my right foot and, and, and see how, how my brain can control with that. Two through five, those are the interesting ones, though. And, of course, you don't want to leave yourself... Excuse me, I'm getting this wrong. Six and seven are those alternate maps. Oh, two through five would be your reduced fuel mappings. And then eight is the caution mapping. And, of course, there are stories of people leaving themselves in fuel map eight, coming back to green flag action and getting us uh, stuck on uh, endless caution cycles. That's the way I was trying to say it. Be nice here in the RaceBot TV booth because we all make mistakes. And look at this wonderful aerial shot down the main straightaway. Once more a swap for the race lead, but we're checking out Adam Crane and Marcel Kovacs. Look rearwards from Kovacs and what just Crane slides up the track almost into the wall. Now down to the inside line and trying to get a move done. Canadian unable to facilitate the pass just yet and indeed tucking up as well for the VRS satellite racing driver. You can just see now it is stringing out more and more at the front. I am noticing Henry Bennett increasingly is pushing how close he wants to come across the yard of bricks. It's Brazil with the nose in front. I wonder with cooler track temperatures what that means for the fuel window. Now, of course, traditionally at, at IMS, you're talking anywhere between 29 and, and 33 laps without too much fuel saving. Anything uh, more than 33 or even 33 can, can be a considerable amount of fuel saving. Here with cooler track temperatures, the ability to just stay flat out a little bit more, and I'm sure... A bit of a prelude for what the weather predictions are saying for this coming at weekend. It was very hot for qualifying in the real world. It will be probably a better spectacle in terms of the action if uh, it's relatively cooler and you can see some more side-by-side -side action like we're seeing now. I believe Aaron Roofs and Andrew Marquez having a bit of a scrap. This is for 12th position. Marquez can't afford to get stuck back here for too long because, well, Adam Crane finds himself in eighth and third place in the championship for Andrew Marquez. He wants to be looking forward, not backwards, towards the chasing pack behind. It's now Thomas Geisler in the, I'm not sure what I should call it, call it the uh, legacy McLaren livery colors, I guess. Trying to get on past as well. Now, one and a half seconds behind the pack of Alexis Newsom. And she's got a pretty good look at Andrew Wood and Chris Wilhite still scrapping it out back and forth. You can see here, well, you saw for just a moment there, 
Really is getting a bit more separated than I thought it might get. Side by side, Kovacs and Crane as well. It's Wilhite and Woodith across the Art of Bricks. Let's watch the leaders and let's watch the rest of the pack as well. And you'll get just that indication of where the separation is forming now. Is there anything more glorious than the sound of engines reverberating here down? Oh, the most hallowed straight of them all, I believe. That's Alexander van der Sant that has lost touch of the leading group of cars. Unfortunate for him. I wonder if maybe some damage he's just taken from brushing the wall in the opening lap that forced him, necessitated a pit stop in the early stages and, well, now still nursing some damage. He's 42.075 seconds slower than your race leaders at this point in time lap 21 then 20 laps complete in round 11 of the iRacing IndyCar Open Championship it's Marco Brazil and Andres Ake who are swapping it out back and forth Henry Bennett second place in the championship lurks in the background looks like Marco Brazil by the way back to traditional yellow and blue. We've seen him competing in the Team Maxon colors for a number of times. Not sure if a bit of a switch there in the program. It was close for Brazil to make his way into this weekend's action. As it was, I think Frank Levick was the last car that worked his way into the field of 33. I think qualifying in 36th in the overall time charts. Had a bit of a uh, brown pants moment as well during one of those caution periods. And has been very much enjoying, I think, the uh, <laughs> wonderful way he managed to jink on pass. Wilhite has lost a position, so Newsom on a charge up through the field continues uh, to be very, very impressive. And in front you can see there's lots of action from the edge of the top ten right now. It's Crane back down to the inside. Inside, not where we've been seeing passes made here at Indy over the last 12 months. And once more, outside line OP. Hey, if Justin Hess is watching, well, there you go, Justin. Uh, maybe one of my Power Slide Motorsports teammates can clip that moment as well and send him the link. Here we go, though. Back down. Oh, draft on his side, I think, this time for the 13 car. In through turn three. Some dirty air being fed by the muscle man, and oh, Crane almost loses control. He'll have to regroup and gather that one up once more. We all love Frank. That is true, Austin. I mean, how can you not love Frank? The former iRacing World Championship competitor all the way back in the uh, Williams days as well. So his experience and, and legacy with sim racing goes so far back. Almost as far back as my producer, uh, usually in, in some of our big events, Hugo Luis. There will be pit stops and working lap 24. We are only probably about seven laps away, I would say here. Of course, that one caution period will, will have extended the run very slightly, but you never know exactly how things will cycle out and if maybe drivers will try and undercut. It's still side by side between Crane and Kovacs. And here comes Andrew Wood to try and take advantage. Inside line for Woodeth, and I was saying before, you don't want to be inside. Does that open the door for Newsom to try? No, Woodeth's going to lose control. He locks that car down in through the short shoot, and we will stay under green flag conditions because of wonderful hands there from Andrew Wood in the number 11 car. I tell you what, RaceBot TV replay is Robin Glenix down onto pit road. Take a look then. At the onboard look as Woodeth looks down to the inside here. And just watch. Not sure if he gets too far below the apron, but car starts to slide a little bit early. I'll take one more look from this vantage point and slow it down. You can see already sliding up the corner, but then there's this second snap. And this is where the good hands come in. You can see the revs dropping down all the way to 2,000 RPM. And well... I'm very impressed that we did not have our second caution of the day. Uh, back to the live coverage, and well, no change really, at least out front. Wood, is, Wood is slipping down has promoted Newsom then into ninth. Wilhite will 
at least hold on to a top 10 position, at least for the time being. Well, if the live timing says a no-stop is calculated, I don't know what to say. Uh, timing 71 might need to take a look at that one. Look at Matt Holobo. Don't think that's for position. That's just lap traffic. Holobo found, finds himself two laps down, and Robin Glenix is still down on pit road. See if we can pick up some sort of issue for Glenix. Is lap 27 moments away then from the pit stop window being opened. Here we go. This is not. Oh, there's. Oh, that. That's what happens to Inglenix. There we go. The race spot TV replay machine really is all seeing. I tell you what. I think we need to ride a bit further back. Oh, that 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 turn one. Th that's your answer. Vicious turn one, and I wonder if the wind had something to do with it here. Let's pull it back in through turn number four and ride on board with Robin Glenix. But what I'm sure is a pretty interesting ride. Oh, this is just understeer city. Look at how much he's turning that wheel. That is never uh, going the way that I think he wants it to go. And we'll get one more look at the action because pit stops are underway. AJ Musselman leads Chris Wilhite and Andrew Marquez down onto the lane. Classic, just washing up the track and a uh, vicious impact. The new damage model, you can see that uh, right side of the car pretty instantly crumple, crumpled on in. And so there we go. Those are the first drivers down onto the pit road for green flag stops. Marquez rolls, as does Wilhite. Muscleman is a bit slow, and he's going to lose out to the Ohio native as they're going to rejoin into some clean air, I do think. Still on the lead lap as well, because, of course, at Indy, you can do that. And here come the race leaders. Newsom down onto the pit road this time around then, all by herself. She will need to cycle out with some help, I think, to try and build up her momentum. There's Marquez in front, so there is going to be lap traffic to contend with for the race leaders. A side-by-side, -side. they dive in through turn three. Andreas Eich, who wait, makes it work on that outside line, but don't know what the strategy is here. It's lap 30 at the line. Working lap 31 now and approaching the halfway point of this race. Thomas Geisler leads Andrew Wood down onto the pit road as well. So two more cars. Where did Newsom cycle on out, I wonder? She's building up her momentum. Snake behind is the muscle man, Chris Wilhite. So Newsom, I think, has actually jumped AJ Muscleman here with a very impressive pit stop. Great there from the Three Crown Racing with Indy Alliance driver. Do the race leaders come down this time around with traffic in front? Eight comes down. Brazil follows him in. Bennett Seppa and Carlos Ruiz stay out then. Let's see if the overcut works out for them as important pit stops. And let's check in with those cars down on pit road. There you can see Woodeth is leaving. Interesting. Very interesting there. Don't know if Ake's really going to be appreciative of that one. Not really breaking any rules as Brazil there, but maybe a bit of a moral code. Will Bennett come down this time around? We're watching to see who wins the race off of pit road. It's Brazil who's in front. Uh, identical pit stop times. There you can see, indeed, diving their way down onto pit lane. Here come the rest of the cars. It's Bennett, Seppa, and it's Carlos Ruiz. Adam Crane and Aaron Roos are still out there and circulating, extending this out to lap 33 on the run. Not necessarily sure how it's going to work out for them. There go the three cars down into their box as well. Up on the jacks they go. Four fresh fire, Firestone tires going onto their cars. And only one more pit stop left on the agenda. They roll. And there comes Brazil. And there comes Ake as well. So Bennett is trying to build up speed on the access road. 
You can just about see him in the shot there. Crane and Roos, the final cars down, leaving Pereno and Wallet still out there on track. Bennett has cycled through into the race lead, at least for now. I don't think he's going to be able to fight this one back, though, from A, because he at least got one. Yes, he has. He'll be thrilled. In the championship picture, that will be very important if he can hold on to that second position. It's Crane rolling this time around as the overcut worked for him like it did for Henry Bennett. There goes the top three. There goes Seppa as well. Newsom on past. Here comes the muscle man. It's close between Crane and Wilhite, but oh, don't know if it worked as well for the Canadian as it did for Henry Bennett. Carlos Ruiz, another big loser. He's down now in 13th overall. That would be net 8th place, if I'm doing the quick math. Still Pereno, Wallet, Gerhard, Macarelli, the four cars out there on track. And look at that. It's Andrew Wood. Thomas Geisler and Marcel Kovacs. So some interesting groupings of cars forming as Diego Pereno down onto the road. Three cars out there and circulating. Side by side, Bennett and Brazil have swapped back and forth. So now it's once more the third car in line that is tucked in. And whether it's fuel saving, whether it's dirty air, at the end of the day, they are still stuck where they are. Bandesant all by himself will have the leaders in his rear view mirrors. Here comes the British Racing Green. Oh, and there we go. In terms of the moral code, I should be more specific. I didn't really mean it as a moral thing. I meant more as just a smart thing to do because the reality is even in the, the left-hand side of the pit road on the iRacing service, you can ghost uh, through the rest of your competitors, but you can also make contact with them. And so if you're in that left lane and trying to make, take the advantage on the car in front of you, you're making the other car slow down and have to wait for you to go on pass if they want to minimize uh, the chance of any contact. Macarelli and Wallet, they're down onto the pit road as well. Gerhard, the final car, almost going to make it all the way to the end of a uh, halfway point of this race. So it's not really a moral thing, although there are certain leagues that enforce it not just morally but from race control as well it's more uh, just that care thing and not driving in in the slow lane you always need to be in the fast lane in the real world and of course dramatic mergers side by side never really uh, good for your heart if you ask me back to the front henry bennett net race leader as laura gerhard is down onto pit road A 20-second car, so sneaking into this top split, but maybe the strategy means a, a shorter pit stop at the end and, and cycles her up through a couple of positions. So where are the rest of the side-by-side -side action? Wh where is it now? It, it, it's kind of single filing itself out is not necessarily what you expect when you saw those track temperatures. Still looks like the outside line is the place to be. And so as Adam Crane tries to look on past for Chris Wilhite, he rim rides the outside and, and says, no, thank you. I'll stay where I am. Jump on board with Crane. He's been one of the more aggressive drivers in trying to make something happen not necessarily being so easy to actually carve his way through the field for Newsom strategy has played its part just carving her way through the field in reckless uh, abandon almost just the way she's slinging it around sometimes really is working out very favorably for her watching with Crane how much his hands are moving not as much as I might have expected Still enough that maybe just losing some, uh, scrubbing a bit too much in the in the dirty air. You can see he's almost following in the tracks of the car in front, and that's not where you want to be. That's the dirty air. That's the wake of the car in front, very much slowing you down. 
Oh, contact. Oh, it's Geisler and it's Woodard. They were side by side fighting it out hard. And it's all ended in disaster. Second caution of the day. And it's almost halfway through the action. Oh, it's close between the two of them. We'll have to take a better look at that one if we can. So Geisler slow through one. Woodith tries the inside line, just tracks up and ugh, contact made. And two never goes into one. And I'm sure there's going to be a, a bit of a discussion had about whose fault was that. We'll try and grab one more look at it if we can. And slow this one down into the super slow-mo. You can just see, oh, he's scrubbing up and washing up the track there and into the orange and blue. It's not actually a, rec a replica livery, I should point out. I've just noticed on Geisler's car. You can see there, it's got his own logos, Team Race First, and it looks like Sunshine Arctic Racing, if I'm reading that correctly from here. Oh, so some wonderful colors there. Never mind. Unfortunate end then to that side-by-side. -side. Scrappers for the second time today. We are under caution here from the virtual IMS. We are going to step aside for a quick break here on RaceBot TV. Don't go anywhere. We'll go side-by-side. Racing underway here. He's catching Valtteri Lander around the outside though. Can he avoid the wall? No, he doesn't. Oh, we've got carnage again. Carnage again. Oh, no front wing on a part of it. Oh, focus back on Adam Blocker as there's contact. Welcome back to Race Spot TV and continued coverage of the iRacing IndyCar Open Championship. Once more live on a Monday night, we are here for the strength of field race in the premier American open wheel official iRacing competition. My name is Arjuna Kenkipati, no Lorenzo Bonder alongside for today's action. He's been called aside for another Race Spot TV broadcast. As always, TV cameras provided to us by Istvan Ballo and TrackCams22.com with additional car cameras designed by RaceBot's own Tyler Maxson. You can follow along with live timing and scoring by heading to racebot.wtf forward slash Indy to follow along with Timing 71 and their world-class suite of data analysis tools. It is now Henry Bennett into the race lead here as the caution is out for the second time today. Contact between Thomas Geisler and Andrew Wood Almost halfway through the action. 85 laps on the agenda in round 11 of this championship. Penultimate round. And next week, in just seven days' time, we will head to the streets of Detroit. I cannot wait. Adam Blocker will be back in action. 
as he tries to reclaim the championship that Brandon Trano stole from him just three months ago. Trano is now immortalized in the iRacing history books. Three consecutive iRacing Indy 500 championships. What an, in what an incredible run and, well, also backed it up with victory on Friday night, if I'm remembering correctly as well. So adds to his legacy here at the Brickyard. A nice little shout out from Scotty Mack himself, who in action 12 months ago here at the virtual IMS, he's in action this coming weekend in the 105th running of the Indianapolis 500. I tell you what, second restart of the day. Let's take this opportunity to ride around and listen in on the sounds and sights here at the virtual IMS. The green flag is back out for round 11 in the iRacing IndyCar Open Championship. Is there anything better than the sound of race car engines? Oh, wonderful cameras. Uh, shout out to Istvan Ballo and TrackCams22.com as well. I mean, oh, what a noise and just reverberating around the th cathedral that is the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. All that hard work done on the X Audio 2 engine and the audio system it really does add something. Watch as well with these fan camera looks that we get. Not much side-by-side -side action throughout the field right now. And once more, it's swapping between two race leaders. Kind of get this view of what it's going to be like in the grandstands watching this weekend as well. What a view. I mean, just get that sense of speed and the sense of occasion as well that accompanies a race at a, at a venue like this. I mean... Oh, I wish one day I'll be in the stands as well. And I'm sh I know there's lots of people in the iRacing IndyCar community that will be trackside this weekend and they'll be cheering on their favorite drivers. If you're watching, by the way, in our iRacing YouTube chat as the caution is out for the third time today, uh, do tell us who you are rooting for this coming weekend. That is Jason Wallet in the 19 car. And so... Let's see if it's maybe contact with Diego Pereno. Just washing up the track there. And I think we need to spool this back even further and see if there's a bit more dodging and dicing on the entry. Now it's just a good run from Pereno here. And you can see just up the track he goes. And there's that contact. So let's ride on board with the 21 here and see what exactly happens first to Wallet in through one. He rides the same line as the car in front of him. That's Christian Maccarelli. So Pereno tries the, the over under. I just don't think it was ever going to happen. And so there you can see contact made and up into the catch fencing went uh, Jason Wallet. So caution back out. And I wonder if any cars will come down onto pit road. Not yet really in the pit window, but when we come back to the green flag action, it should be, if I'm doing my math correctly here, 35 laps to go. 
And so, thir 35 laps. I mean, not bad. You, you could you could do that if you were brave. If you're Chris Wilhite, is that maybe what you're thinking here? Newsom as well. Oh, the fake out. Oh, did we just see some tactics there from Chris Wilhite in the three car? Plenty of cars down onto the pit road, but I just wonder. Some gamesmanship there from Chris Wilhite has jinked Alexis Newsom down onto pit road. So we'll take one more look at this. Will Height says, oh, thank you very much. You go down onto pit road. I'll take uh, that bit of track position for a uh, thank you very much. So back to live. Let's see if there's any change on the race off of pit road. Still Newsom, I think. You can already see rolling herself off. And at the end of the day, she's up 10 positions regardless, so she'll be pretty happy if she can work her way just up a couple more positions. Hey, you can see those positions gained that I was referring to. Pereno up 8, Newsom 10, Crane 8, Marquez 6. I mean, for Marquez in his championship fight, that might be crucial. I mean, Crane and Marquez are two cars scrapping it out with each other. And if I recall, when I was looking at the uh, the points when it factored in the drop weeks for, for Marquez, it's actually a bit more tough of a situation. He really does need a, a strong end to this championship in order to potentially be there in third. It's close between Lichtenberg and Crane, though. So with Lichtenberg missing the action... Never know how things might swing, especially with such a tough and demanding race forthcoming on the streets of Belle Isle. Pace car is still out there, so at least one more lap under caution. Who am I rooting for this weekend? I do encourage you to, to let us know who, who you're going to be cheering on. I think I'm in split camps. Ultimately, I, I just want a good race. But uh, if, you're, if, you're, if you're asking me who I think is going to win, I, pro I probably would answer Scott Dixon. That seems like a, a, a pretty, pretty safe bet. Now, of course, that cheering on Simona Di Silvestro and, uh, of course, the entire Pareto Autosport team, the female-driven IndyCar program that made history. What a tense day it must have been, not just on Saturday, but Sunday as well. And Adam Blocker... Knows what it's like to be in a championship fight here on the iRacing service. He's learning what it's like to be trackside at the month of May. In his trackside responsibilities with Ilmore Engineering. He was on the engine for the 16 car. And no, west for, no rest excuse me, for the weary. Straight out of qualifying and straight into practice mode. Calibrating the engine out of Q-Boost into race trim and all sorts of shenanigans that I'm sure... They had to deal with Bennett, Brazil, Ake, Seppa, and Wilhite. That is the top five. And it will be 35 laps to go here at the line. Let's see Wilson Nato in the YouTube chat. Finished in fourth position in this weekend's iRacing Indy 500. The highest non-Apex Racing team driver. What a dominant weekend for Trano and Apex Racing. One, two, three, four in quali, and then one, two, three in the race itself. And for Johan Harth, if not for a bit of a technical issue, who knows, it could have been slightly different. Here we go then. Pace car back down onto the safety of the pit lane, and great jump from Henry Bennett. He's already got a nine-tenths of a second advantage coming across the start-finish stripe. We'll give the opportunity for the cars behind to build up that momentum, but I mean... Why not? Newsom taking advantage of fresh rubber around the outside of Carlos Ruiz. And now we'll look in front to AJ Musselman as well. Gap closing in. It's three tenths of a second now between the two race leaders. And watching then for Newsom on the fresh tires. What can these cars do 
in terms of closing the gap and trying to challenge with the cars in front. Brazil to the race lead. It's lap 20 on the stint for the race leaders. And so they'll be down onto pit road in probably 15 laps time or so. Can Newsom and company stretch this fuel window to the end? One more caution, depending on where it falls, might, might put things in a very interesting position on the strategy. So, be something to keep, out, keep an eye out for. And unlike this past weekend when I'm sure all of these drivers had some sort of team assistance and calling out strategies and, and issues around the track, here on a Monday night, regular competition, week in, week out, the drivers show up to compete. I have a feeling it's probably not as much assistance on hand from, from the teammates. Some lap traffic, that's Jason Wallet, who is now four laps down, but still out there and circulating. He's allowed Bennett, Brazil, Ake, and Sepa to get on pass. Here comes Wilhite, here comes Crane. jump on board with the VRS Satellite Racing driver. His teammate, Chad Simpson, who uh, made his eighth, his eighth feature appearance in the Indy 500 this past weekend. What a run that is, not just for him, but for the hyperstar Brendan Lichtenberg as well. Eight out of 12 appearances. That tells you all you need to know about the consistency in their preparations and qualifying strength when it comes to the month of May. And I'm sure they'll be carrying that forward into the month of November as well in the 2021 open wheel 500 mile race. Is that a gaggle or am I getting my eyes mixed up? It's a bit of a gaggle, but it's also lap traffic. It's now Jason Wallet blocking, I believe that must be the muscle man. Indeed, yes it is. The muscle man trapped in between Alexis Newsom and Laura Gerhard, two female drivers. Always great to have such a diverse set, not just across the globe, of course, but drivers of all sorts of backgrounds as well. Muscle man forces it three wide. Here comes Carlos Ruiz as well. Jason Wallet says, get on past. I don't think Newsom appreciates that. Lap traffic was a concern for her seven days ago at the Atlanta Motor Speedway. Well, it hasn't cost her to uh, spin around this time around, but I am sure Newsom will not be thrilled with that one. At the same time, the muscle man has dropped 2.5 seconds to Andrew Marquez in front. So these cars are losing track of the top seven contenders. Alexander van der Sand is back down onto pit road. Should be able to make it through to the end, but he will go at least one lap down because here comes the race leaders in through turn three. I tell you what, I, I need to listen to the sound of these engines once more. So let's turn them up once more and just listen to them reverberate the wonderful 700 horsepower Delara engines. Well, we don't actually have engine manufacturers here, so we'll call them Delara engines, unless you're an I-5G driver. Demerit engines in that case. Let's just listen to them here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. What a noise. Oh, what a noise. Alexander van der Sant, rather long pit stop there. I wonder if he smacked the wall once more for good measures. He finds himself two laps down. Been in a scrap with Matt Holobo, who's also two laps down here. So not sure what happened there to the 17. At least they've got some uh, action to look forward to. 28, it'll be 27, in fact, at the line. Is Brazil, the pole position sitter who leads, but it's Henry Bennett in his quest for the championship. And will look to try and take a well needed victory in the championship points that are associated with that as well. 
Andreas Eek lurks in the background after starting on the outside of the front row. Not such an easy run for him being that third car in line. But just like with Bennett in the early stages, the question is, is it fuel maps? Is that, is that what Eek is doing? Is he just riding around in that third position, saving some fuel? As we work our way into the pit stop window. It is no longer Newsom that is the best car on fresh tires. Carlos Ruiz now holds that honor. Brazil and Bennett, they will be due down any time. I mean, three laps max, I would say, if you're, if you're Marco Brazil. And in fact, if you're Chris Wilhite or Andrew Marquez, you might even be down the next time around, but it will be 25 to go. So shorter pit stop, but not short enough for drivers to try and risk anything in terms of not taking tires as we saw Wilson Nado do in the iRacing fixed 500 in the closing stages of the race. And maybe for Ruiz Newsom Kovacs, maybe that's something they can try. Still swapping back and forth, they go. What an interesting race it's been. The cool track temperatures have not really developed the type of action, and that's because they've increased, if anything. There you can see 39 degrees Celsius track temperature, and while it is 20 degrees cooler than what we've seen in the virtual month of May so far, it still seems just about as tough for anyone third car in line to make something happen. They are snaking, snaking their way back and forth on that back straightaway. That's Gerhard in the 22. Uh, it's the muscle man who's doing that ducking and diving. There's Marquez down on the lane, though. So he's the first car to blink, and let's see what his pit stop time will be. That will be somewhat of an indication for the rest of the drivers. Here he comes up on the jacks. He will go four final tires to be placed onto that car. As they still swap it around for the race lead. 7.9 stationary for Marquez. Gives you an indication of maybe what to expect from the rest of the field. Who are not coming down this time around. Interestingly for Chris Wilhite, who I did think would be down on that lap, if not the one before with Marquez. There you can see it's 34 laps and counting since he last visited his crew down on pit road. So would expect for Chris Wilhite to be down this time. Indeed, is he indicating or is he searching for clean air? We're not sure what's going on there. Hey, it's a traffic jam. It's a party now for the race lead. Not just three cars. Every Seppo has closed in as well. Wilhite's coming down. So there we go. One more car calls it time. Final stop for the Ohio native Chris Wilhite. It is the money stop, as they would call it in NASCAR. And we will watch and see what Will Height can do. I can hear him on the rev limiter just trying to increase and bump up that speed down on pit road into the box very tidily there. Up he goes. Four seconds in counting. It's 7.9. It's the same as for Marquez. Whereas Marquez then in comparison, 33 seconds total for Wilhite in the lane. As we've got Marco Brazil down as well, followed by Adam Crane. Final stops then for the entire field, moments away from taking place. And let's see what Brazil does here. Can be difficult and Indy, no downforce. He gets into his box though, just uh, locks up the tires and slides that very tiny amount. I wonder if that will cost him in the grand scheme of things. 33 as well, 33.8 for Brazil. Here comes Bennett now this time around. All by himself as well, so no draft assistance for the British racing green car. This is crucial. Bennett can't afford any sort of slip up here. His championship hopes are resting on the line. Into the box he comes. 
Oh, he has to get off the brakes very slightly and release himself into the clutches of his pit crew. It's a bit longer in the box as well. That's not ideal. Whereas Marco Brazil coming down the back straightaway. He is side by side with Chris Willite as well. There is so much action now for the race lead. Brazil gets past. Where's Bennett? Bennett's off of turn two. My word, it has all changed around. There goes Willite to the net race lead. And Bennett's going to get swarmed. Crane unable to find a way past. But Bennett will have to hold strong on the outside line. He holds on to net second position. And oh, it's all kicking off then this time around. Andreas Ake is in the box as well. They are too wide, too deep. It's Wilhite into the lead. But it's Ake who might net a cycle through to the net race lead. Look at him. Oh, he is trying to take all of the track available to him on that access road. Bennett jinking back and forth. Oh, are we in for a photo finish here today? 18 laps to go. The team talent driver holds the inside line, but it's the outside line that's been OP so far. Nothing doing just yet, but all sorts of changes at the front of your field, and we're still waiting for the final pit stops to play themselves out. The muscle man down on the lane this time around. I think he had to slow down and back up in his box as well. He's lost a whole heap of momentum. Seppa merges his way behind Adam Crane as well. So Crane has moved his way up through the field very effectively in the pit stop cycle. Brazil tries to look on past Adam Crane as well. The outside line's where he will want to be. This is going to be a shootout, and this is a shootout with championship implications as well. Six cars are still out there and circulating. It was Gerhard, Ruiz, Newsom, Kovacs, Macarelli, and Roos. There's Holobo, who's merging his way back up two laps down. I have no, I have no idea. Who is going to win this race? There is lap traffic to contend with as well. So many different factors are coming into effect here. The pole position sitter is side by side with Adam Crane and loses the position for now. Alexander Van der Sant jumps into our YouTube chat. It was not a penalty. Oh, at the start. Forgot to load the race setup. So one of the two theories that we had up here in the RaceBot TV booth was right. And I, I guess the reality is that in a, in a race like this, there's only one of two ways that it really can go. Let's jump on board with Henry Bennett and look at the swap drafting that's back and forth still going on. You'll see here as he works his way into turn three, it's timing the run as late as you can get it. The most draft benefit as well. And also means that for the car behind, he can find the correct groove that he wants to use to try and find a way on past. You see here as well, Ake is a bit earlier to pull out and not going to get the maximum effect, but they are extending the gap and, and, and doing some very quick lap times. I mean, to Ruiz and Newsom, it was three tenths of a second difference between the net race leaders and those cars in second and third. So swap drafting is clearly helping out these two cars as they try and charge their way back up to the front of the pack. Fourteen laps to go then and pit stops imminent at least for one car. Laura Gerhard in the 22 machine. She should be down if not this lap the next time around. The final ten minutes of action here then in the virtual month of May. It's of course not over. The yeah, iRacing IndyCar Series will be still in action this week, but at least here at RaceBot TV, we will turn our attentions, attention away from the Brickyard, at least for now. There comes Gerhard down onto pit road. Ruiz now cycles into the net race lead. They are still tenths of a second slower, though, than the cars that we're watching right now. They are very well formed up here. With the one and two machines in the session showing everyone how swap drafting works at Indy. 
We got a yellow flag now, Paolo. I mean, well, that would shake things up, that's for sure. Who knows if these cars would come back down onto the lane. I would probably think that at least one car would risk it. At least one, if not two. But then again, there's a reason why I'm up here in the booth and not down there on the track as Jason Wallet almost makes it three wide. The lap traffic still swapping back and forth. They go. It's Bennett back to the point. Once more, I don't know what it is about races here the last couple of weeks, but that Christian Horner foot tap that has been slowly growing and developing in my left leg is intensifying once more. Oh, side by side, Zeppa with Marco Brazil. That pole position car struggling a bit more in the dirty air than I think Brazil would want. And you can see, in fact, other than those two cars out front, there's anyone else is struggling to, to fight it out side by side. If we check in with the race leader, there's Newsom. You can see full four tenths behind Carlos Ruiz. So the lap time has picked up at least for Newsom and Ruiz. I mean, last time they were actually a couple of tenths faster, a couple of hundreds, I should say, in this case, faster than Aiken Bennett. But pit lane delta is at least 30 plus seconds. And so those cars, they are begging for that caution to fly at the perfect amount of time. It is 10 laps to go then, and at the line it will be 10 to go for these two cars in the net race lead. Just over 200 miles of action, and it comes down to the final 25. Curious how that works. You have to be there at the end to be able to compete for the race victory. It was an interesting month of May here on the iRacing service, that is for sure. Blistering track temperatures, I think, very much setting the tone for the racing that we saw across both the fixed 500 and the open 500. But as always, just such a, such a great time. Such an interesting time for the community as well. There is nothing like Indy Qualifying Week and the, the drama that it brings out from everyone. Not just in our community, let's be honest. It would be uh, across the entire iRacing forums as well. If you ask me here, the two cars in control are Henry Bennett and Andreas Ake. I mean, they're still able to swap back and forth. Chris Wilhite is dropping off very slightly as well. You can see it side by side between Brazil and Sepa. Looks like Brazil might have lost a little bit of his pace here in that dirty wake of the cars in front of him. Meanwhile, the gap between Ruiz and Newsom is up to 1.1 seconds. So as Ruiz down onto the pit road, he blinks. Followed in by Thomas Geisler, a lapped car. Money stop then for the 12 machine. And we'll see where this cycles him out in comparison to who we believe are the net race leaders. Watching down the pitch straight here as Ruiz is into his box now. There comes Bennett and Ake. Side by side at the yard of bricks. Not sure who led. But you can see Ruiz is going to fall, I think, significantly behind. It's not even going to be that close between him and the leading car. So, I mean, Newsom, Kovacs, Macrelli, and Roofs, they need the caution and they need it now. It will be five laps to go in just a few moments' time. Not this time around. I'm getting myself, getting ahead of myself here and just forgetting that the cars in front are actually leading this race. If I'm Bennett or Ake, I don't want to lead coming to the white flag. 
I want to be in control of how I can use the draft as Kovacs and Macarelli are down on the lane now. So there we go. Two more cars are blinking. Just leave Newsom and Roofs left to make their final trip down onto the lane. I want to be in control of my destiny. And that means launching myself down the inside into turn three on the final lap. How do you play this? Who, who knows? It's all going to come down to the wire. And unlike what we saw this weekend, I'm fairly confident this will be a photo finish. Ruiz cycles out to the edge of the top 10. Let's see where he feeds out in comparison to Newsom and Roofs when they're down onto the lane. Here comes Roofs in the 20. Newsom has worked strategy magic in the past. Can she do it once more with four laps to go here in IMS? Side by side, it was Brazil and Seppa for a second. Brazil's lurking on the background of Adam Crane as well. Looks like it's getting cooler as well. I wonder if this opens the door maybe for that third car in line. It says 41 degrees, but you can't deny it is definitely looking darker in Speedway Indiana right now. Newsom is still out there, you know? And watching her speed, I'm not sure if I can throw that up for you here. Uh, she's noticeably down on her lap time. As Team I5G says, a half a lap lead, clutch and coast, clutch and coast. And, well, you can see the last lap time was a 43-814. Five miles to go. Can Alexis Newsom pull the strategy of her lifetime? Oh, it's going to come down to the wire. It's a 44-955 this time around. We wait for Ben and an eight. What's the lap time going to be for them? Oh, that Horner foot tap is getting stronger and stronger. It's a 41-181. It is not going to be enough at this current trajectory. 13 seconds at the line, and they need more time. Oh, my word. Can she do this? I don't believe it. I thought this was going to be a relatively quiet race. Strategy side by side. Oh, Alexis Rossi, I'm stealing that one, Alexander Van der Sand. 2.5 miles to go. The white flag is in the air, and it's a 10 second advantage. The speeds are consistent. It's still 310. I didn't, I didn't know if someone was going to be able to do this. I thought it might be possible. I didn't think it would work out like this. Come on, Alexis. Oh, you've just got two more quarters to go. They're still side by side for second. It's not going to matter. She's down on the access road. What is going on? She's out of fuel. She's out of fuel. Here they come! No, Alexis! Who's it gonna be? Is it gonna be Bennett or is it gonna be Ake? It's Bennett! My word, it was dramatic all the way to the end. But in his championship hopes, Henry Bennett takes a much needed victory here in round 11 of the iRacing IndyCar Open Championship. It is heartbreak for Alexis Newsom. She will settle for seventh position. I've lost my voice. I have lost my voice. It was close. It was so close. But at the end, it was heartbreak. And at the line, it was Henry Bennett taking a victory here from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Let's see if we can get that moment coming to the finish line.
And let's go super slow-mo here. The gap at the line, let me cl clarify this for you guys. One thousandth of a second. I am in disbelief. I am in utter disbelief. What an incredible ending here. It was a slightly processional race, if you ask me, but it all kicked off and well. Let's take a look at the onboard look from Henry Bennett. Can see here, he's just finding a way. He's just looking for a run. He sees Alexis in front of him, pull to the side and across the yard of bricks. He is a victor here today in round 11 of the iRacing IndyCar Open Championship. It's true, the Brickyard decides who's going to win and it wasn't to be for Alexis Newsom in the iRacing month of May. What a month of May it was for her though. Qualified for the fixed 500, for the open 500 as well and almost made some strategy magic here on a Monday night. At the end of the day though, it's Henry Bennett. Well, in that championship fight, I'm sure this victory will propel him into a championship showdown in seven days time with Adam Blogger. Who knows how that will end up, but look at the margin. One thousandth of a second between Bennett and Ake at the line. It was so close and I really couldn't even tell from the shots that we got who took victory there. Chris Wilhite, what a day for him. Podium up six positions on the day. He'll be delighted with that once more here on a Monday night. Adam Crane, 10 positions gained for him. He'll be pretty happy with his performance for the VRS Satellite Racing Team. Marco Brazil, pole position to fifth. He'll, I'm sure, be slightly disappointed after trying to make a bit of a bounce back after missing out on the action this past weekend, but showed he's still got a very strong car underneath him. Severi Seppa in sixth with Alexis Newsom. A heartbreak, 1.7 seconds. That was the margin between Newsom and a victory here today. Andrew Marquez, he's an eighth with Carlos Ruiz in ninth. And the muscle man, AJ Muscleman himself, on the edge of the top ten. Not sure exactly what happened to AJ there because he was looking very, very promising earlier on. And who knows what happened there. By the way, biggest mover on the day, Alexis Newsom, 13 positions gained there. Laura Gerhardt, Marcel Kovacs, Diego Pereno, Aaron Roos, Christian Maccarelli. Those are the cars on the lead lap with Matt Holobo. Thomas Geisler, Jason Wallet, all nursing some sort of damage to the finish line. Alexander Van der Sant and Andrew Wood caught up in some early race shenanigans along with Robin Glenix and Tony Pizarro. Well, I think that's all I've got to say for now. Um, it's probably time for my voice to get a well-earned break and I'm not necessarily sure if we're going to get any post-race interviews there, Bennett, Aiken, Wilhite, not necessarily known for jumping into the RaceBot TV booth. I tell you what, we'll give them that opportunity at least to come here and talk to us after a well-earned podium finish. What a season it's been so far. I mean, we started at, at Auto Club with high drama. Adam Blocker making contact with Alexis Newsom about 60% through the race, having to retire and starting his quest to reclaim this championship in the worst way possible. Then on the very last lap of the race, the new three-time king, Brandon Trainer, lost it all by himself, coming to the line and, well, caused a bit of a chain reaction that took out a number of cars. From there, we went to the Green Hell, as everyone knows, the best track in the world. Before Twin Ring Motegi, the streets of Long Beach Barber, the Milwaukee Mile, two... Uh, two Weeks back to back in the Lone Star State, starting at the Texas Motor Speedway uh, before heading over to the Circuit of the Americas. A couple of weeks ago, the Indy GP that we had, lots of interesting faces there making their way onto a Monday night. Hotlanta a week ago was an interesting one. Not nece necessarily sure if we're going to see that happen ever again. Uh, at least in the way that we saw that. Of course, that was Indy qualifying week, so a lot of drivers were focused on the task at hand. We are done here then, at least on a Monday from the Brickyard this season. One more race left to go. You can catch it live on RaceBot TV.
from the streets of Detroit, a championship showdown between Adam Blocker and Henry Bennett. That and so much more to come here live on RaceBot TV. So uh, don't forget, if you're already not subscribed to us on YouTube, hit that red button and the bell next to it to get notified every single time we get go live with a great sim racing series that we get to cover. I was talking about it this past weekend. So much American Open Wheel competition here live on RaceBot TV coming up. Uh, we've had three different Lionheart competitions already in 2021. The ISOWC has joined them now as an open setup competition as well. And then we've got coming up the month of November and the next big race here from the virtual Indianapolis Motor Speedway. What a season it's been so far. Just one more week left to go. It's a championship showdown, and you do not want to miss it live on RaceBot TV. Hopefully, I will be joined by uh, my teammate Lorenzo Bonda once more for the action. Uh, but my name is Arjuna Kankipati, and delighted, as always, you've joined us here on a Monday night. Uh, TV cameras brought to us by Istaman Ballo and TrackCams22.com with additional car cameras designed by RaceBot's own Tyler Maxson. Uh, live timing and scoring powered by our friends at Timing71. Uh, you can follow the best in the real and virtual world of motorsports. Seven days to go and a new driver will be crowned champion in the iRacing IndyCar Open Championship. What a season it's been and I cannot wait to see it come to an end. Coverage of Season 3 as well will be live on RaceBot TV, so never fret. Monday nights will be busy for our entire team. So long and goodbye, and we'll see you for that championship showcase in just seven days' time. Lander around the outside though. Can he avoid the wall? No, he doesn't. Oh, we've got Carnage again. Carnage again. Oh, no front wing on the part of it. Oh. Focus back on Adam Blocker as there's contact. 